It's got to be on the right road, with the right treatment, the right time. Times are changing. It's no longer constructing roads. It's about preserving and maintaining the roads. It's about working with the state agencies and contractors and suppliers to get out and do preservation treatments at the right time so that we effectively extend the service life, improve the quality of service for the traveling public. Preventive maintenance is a tool for pavement preservation. Unlike routine maintenance that involves regularly scheduled activities, preventive maintenance is a strategy which is planned. It is not reactive maintenance intended to keep a pavement at a particular level of service. Rather, preventive maintenance applies quantifiable, cost-effective treatments to preserve an existing roadway, retard future deterioration, and improve the functional condition of the system. And unlike rehabilitation, which restores a pavement structure, the goal of preventive maintenance is to extend the life of structurally sound pavements. We should apply a preventive maintenance treatment while the pavement's still in good condition. You've got to make sure that you have adequate structural structure of the pavement. Otherwise, it will not last very long. Uh, if you put a micro seal or a thin overlay over a pavement that's not in good structural condition, in a year or two, you're right back to where you were with the same, same problems. Although a variety of treatments may be used appropriately in a preventive maintenance program, the same treatments do not constitute preventive maintenance if applied as a stopgap measure simply to delay needed rehabilitation. Just because we're doing a particular preventive maintenance treatment does not mean that it's preventive maintenance type of work. True preventive maintenance requires selecting the right road, choosing the right treatment, and applying it at the right time. To do this requires, first, an evaluation of the current and past conditions of the road. In this example, the cracking is more severe and widespread. The pavement's condition has deteriorated beyond the threshold for preventive maintenance. Preventive maintenance are things that, uh, that protect a road surface before you start seeing alligator cracking. You need a preventive maintenance treatment, a reclamite, a fog seal, a slurry seal, micro pavement, something to, even a chip seal, to restore the, the sealed surface of your highway before you get intrusion of water there. And sometimes that, that seal could come early on after a new overlay. Once a candidate has been identified and the preventive maintenance project has been designed, it's important to act quickly to get the work done. The window of opportunity is brief, generally within one year of pavement selection. Because you could have a good solution, but if you don't get out there and do it in the right time frame, then it no longer is the right solution for that road. Selecting the right treatment is an equally important element in an effective preventive maintenance program. Now, there's a lot of factors that go into determining what treatment should be used. Uh, one is the availability of a contractor. And this is important as an industry balance. Are we using the resources in the workforce around us effectively? And it's not unusual that contractors can help us uh, by providing insight into maybe better techniques. Maintenance factors, how, how durable is the process we put out there? How long will it extend the life of the underlying pavement? So I think it, it would make a difference on the pre-existing condition of the pavement you're going over. Each state has to tailor a preventive maintenance program that's going to meet their needs we perhaps don't need to place those expensive treatments on a low volume road. Now we have a lot of traffic to deal with. We can't afford to shut down a freeway. Operational considerations or even funding and policy considerations. We're just trying to provide the motorists with a very smooth, efficient riding pavement. It depends on climate, climatological effects. The environmental effects have a tremendous impact on what treatments use. Assessing the performance of different treatments under different conditions will better equip an agency to select the right treatment at the right time. 
The Strategic Highway Research Program has mapped out four environmental zones related to long-term pavement performance. A wet climate with freezing temperatures, wet with non-freezing temperatures, a dry no-freeze zone, and a dry climate with freezing temperatures. The environmental effects in these different zones will cause pavements to display different condition deficiencies at different times thus requiring different treatments. By the very nature, pavements that are subjected to greater traffic volumes and heavier loading are more apt to deteriorate than roads that are not. And so we need to look at those traffic conditions to determine what may be the most cost-effective treatment available. Agencies generally break preventive maintenance treatments into four broad groups the least costly crack and joint treatments, surface seals in the moderate price range, the more expensive functional pavement enhancements, and minor rehabilitation techniques. Common definitions of uh, preventive maintenance and pavement preservation are not cast in stone. We're still trying to work towards commonality in our definitions, and that may take us a year or two longer. But it doesn't mean that the common groupings of these treatments wouldn't be somewhat similar in most states. An effective preventive maintenance program requires a customized toolbox tailored specifically to address the unique conditions and needs of each state. Ideally, it should include a variety of treatments and techniques. Agencies may need to expand their contractor base and to foster strengthen and sustain opportunities for firms to respond to preventive maintenance needs. It should include survey and evaluation methods that assure consistent and accurate tracking of pavement performance, providing the data needed to make intelligent decisions on pavement selection, timing, and treatment. And it should include the administrative tools that allow agencies to act in a timely manner, both to identify candidates early in pavement life and to apply treatments within a short time after identification and project design. We have to cast aside the construction mentality and quit looking at capital improvements in construction as the main program and start to address the customer's demands for preservation, improved mobility, and improved safety in the road. The biggest challenge to establish a preventive maintenance program is to change the mindset of a lot of people. We need to begin looking at pavements in good condition and keep them in good condition by starting slow and understanding the performance of the treatments and the cost-effective nature of the treatments. Uh, they'll begin to learn what, what benefits will accrue to the system. And then you can figure out what your budget needs are. Then you can go to the legislature and fight for your funding and say, this is what it will take, this is what our history is showing, this is how long it's lasting, and there's the money that we need to keep maintain it at this level. I think it's very important that we all work together as a team and share this knowledge. And I, it isn't that one tool is any better than the other, but we all need to work together to answer this question, what do I use? And when do I use it and on what conditions? It's got to be the right road, the right treatment, and the right time. Then states will start seeing the benefits of preventive maintenance.